UFC victory. How are you feeling? Ah, oh, super excited, man. Uh, decades worth of work, and I always knew I'd be back here. I can officially say I'm a UFC fighter. Um, you know, even though I won that contender series fight, it wasn't a UFC fight, and uh, I'd been in the UFC, but I never won. So to get a win like that, and uh, I couldn't have played it out any better. Extremely excited. Uh, put in a lot of hard work, and you know it's paying off. Yeah, you dropped him with a kick. I mean, we see sometimes we see that, but it's rare. I can't remember the last time we saw someone actually get like floored with a leg kick. Um, obviously, you, I assume you thought the finish was there, but do you have to compose yourself, or do you just go for the finish as soon as you can? Yeah, I think I, I think I remain composed. I mean, uh, when I hit him with that first one, I saw it in his in his eyes and his mouth that uh, it didn't feel good. When I came right back with the second one. I hit both of them flush, and right there I could see him wince. And then, you know, I kind of took my time, got him with that third one that put him down, and I was just like, okay, maybe, you know, this is it. And uh, he started getting back up again. I think even when I was on the ground, I kicked again. But when he started getting back up, I hit him with a shot to put him back down, hit him with a clean elbow, um, and I knew it was super close, man. And I was just so pumped, and the ref called it. It was an uppercut that finished him, right? Yeah, I believe so. I don't remember that. I've been I've been drilling that a ton with my coach G back there, and he's he came in. He's like, bro, that uppercut we kept working. He's like, I hit. I honestly do not remember the uppercut. My knuckle does, but I, I do not. <laughs> um, I just want to say last thing as well is you said to Bisping that his career was an inspiration to you. What exactly about Bisping? Is yeah, man, it's uh, it's just you know the long road, the long journey, the ups and downs, and uh, you know never giving up, the perseverance, the grit to continue on and I think it shows, man, and it, I know this, but it shows with some guys, it comes early, and they just hit it off right off the bat. Look at McGregor, man, rose to the top, and it was the man right away. And a guy like Bisbing that just went through the fire, the trials and tribulations for so many years, and then finally got that, you know, that got that gold around his waist. And uh, to see that, you know, I, I fought my last UFC fight prior to this one was UFC on Fox 2, and Michael Bisbing lost to Chal Sonnen, and I lost to... Uh, Chris Camozzi that night. It was January 28, 2012. So uh, to fight on the same card as him, and obviously he he stayed in the UFC, you know, and had a great career. But to see him just climb to the top and finally get what he was chasing that whole time uh, is a huge inspiration to me. Um, you know, I was with Glory Kickboxing. I, I took my losses. I kept going. I climbed in the top 10 all the way to a number two world ranking and fought for the world title. Philip came up a little bit short. But, you know, I have new goals of cracking the top 15 in the UFC, then the top 10. And you know, you don't know what happens. Whatever happens, man, I'd like to, you know, get my shot at that UFC title and, you know, just keep on trucking. Happy Halloween. Thanks, man. You too. Dustin, I mean, obviously that many years, you know, very few guys have that long of a break and still make it back to UFC. Was there any time when you thought maybe it's just not meant to be? I never once thought that, man. I, you know, fortunate. I was very fortunate enough when I got cut uh, to, to get a promotion like Glory that, uh, you know, I was able to keep my career going. I was able financially to keep going um, and, and and just go through some extremely hard fights, difficult fights, guys that, you know, a lot, a lot of people in America know, but just, I mean, the best strikers in the world um, were at glory. And, um, you know, the entire time I knew I was just gaining that experience. I knew I was going to come back to MMA and the UFC is where I wanted to be, man. I, I always dreamed of getting that first UFC win and just get a win in general. Um and I feel like everything happens for a reason, man. I was outside of the promotion, just building myself up. And, you know, the belief I have in myself because of the prior experiences and, and uh, you know, that I've went through is uh, I carry it with me every day, man. And I'm, I'm happy to be back. Obviously, since obviously since the last time you were in UFC, things are very different, not just, you know, this year, but all around just did it live up to the way you've imagined it for several years to get that first W? Yeah, man. And you know what? It's still different because of, you know, the world we're living in right now with the no fans, the apex, the no crowd. Uh, but you just got to adapt. You know, I, I love the apex. I love fighting here. I felt like the, the no crowd the first time you had to get used to it because you do pick up a lot of energy and emotion from the fans. Uh, that just wasn't there last time. You know, there's times I was kind of feeling down. If I could have heard people yelling, screaming my name, I might have gone a little bit harder. But this time, especially with the walkout, I think a walkout makes a big difference, too, being able to hear your music, get in the zone, hear your opponent's music. And, uh, you know, it's changed drastically with the Reebok. And, uh, but you know what? The UFC always takes care of you. I remember that how well they treated me back then and, and how well they treat me now. And, you know, I'm just happy to be back. And uh, when I was here last time, I just didn't really believe or – 
fully believed that I belonged. And now I know I belong. I know I can be the man in this promotion. I know I can go on a great run and, and, and put on exciting fights. Final question for me, just, you know, there are a lot of guys that get down on themselves after they've been cut, but obviously everyone's dream is to make it back. What would your advice be to some of these guys or girls who, you know, they want that second shot one day? Man, I would say just put your head down and grind. You got to keep going, man. You're going to have, you're going to have people telling you you can't. And you, and on the same side, you have, I, I was around people that told me how good I was. And, and the same people that tell you how good you are and the same people who tell you that you suck, are they're, they're both wrong. You know, you got to keep that tunnel vision and you got to have self-belief. You got to believe in yourself. And something I always say, you have to have a short-term memory and bulletproof confidence, man. I mean, even after this victory, I got to soak it in, take it in for a few days. But after that, man, it's over. It's on to the next one. You know, I got to, I got to focus on what's next. How soon after you did the contender series did you get the call to do this fight? And was it tough to kind of keep your emotions in check, knowing that this this two months coming up to, to try to stay focused and not get too excited? Uh, yeah, actually, I was uh, I fought August fourth. I think it was like a couple weeks after that. I was on the golf course. My coach gave me a call. My manager gave me a call at the same time. Told me it was going to be Justin Ledet. Told me it was a great matchup. Uh, side note: Right when I found that out, I'm on a par five. <laughs> hit a beautiful drive. Had a good second shot, and I chipped in my third shot for Eagle right when I found out about this fight. So uh, that was super cool. But actually, they called. They were interested in me fighting August 29th uh, when Anthony Smith uh, fought Rakic, my teammate. And I was like, dude, there's no way I can. I had that cut above my eye from uh, Ty Flores. So um, I said, no, I can't do that. And they're like, well, what about Halloween? I was like, perfect. You know, I get a, I get a kind of ease into training. I said that, and I was right into hard sparring right away. But uh, yeah, I had plenty of time to prepare, and, and, and tonight I got to execute. So it was a good, good game plan. For a lot of people out there, 2020 is one of these years that most people are always going to remember as just being a, a, one hell of a year. But for you, 2020 is actually towards the end of it. It's rebounded very well for you. I mean, th this has got to be a, a wonderful thing for you. So 2020 for you is probably not a bad thing. No, man. I mean, it's all, everything in life is perspective, man. And, uh, I think perspective and attitude is everything. You know, you can look at 20 and 20 and, uh, you can say, why me, why this, why that man? But I always keep my head up. I always put a smile on my face and I always work. I always grind, keep going, man. Not much gets me down and not much affects me. Like I said, man, short-term memory, bulletproof confidence. And, uh, I love 2020. Well, now you're going to ride momentum into 2021. When you look at 2021, what sort of goals and plans are you going to put out there for yourself? What do you want to hope to achieve in the next year coming? I've got big goals, man. I have a, a twin brother. It's uh, very dear to me. Uh, that's my tattoo. We have the same tattoo, but I text him. I was like, I was saying, you know, 2020 is my year. He's like, bro, 2020 is your decade. He's like, I feel it, you know, and uh, I believe it, man. I have big goals. Like I said, um, I want to crack the top 15 in the UFC. I want to crack the top 10 and eventually fight for that world title. And, you know, I believe in myself. I think I have the skills to do it. I think that, uh, you know, the fires that I've walked through and the ashes that I've rose from is, have put me here. And, you know, I'm, I'm ready to go accomplish those goals. Well, you know, since you brought it up and I could see that the emotion was starting to come out a little bit, talking about family. Is this something that your family always knew that you would get to this point? And then is it nice to have to have that belief in you? Yeah, 100 percent, man. They've, they've always believed in me. I've always believed in myself. Um, I do this for them, too, man. I, I, I know how proud they are. Um, and uh, yeah, dude, because my brother, he's a badass. We're twin brothers, and he started fighting before me, and he's the one who got me into fighting. And uh, circumstances kind of let him out of it. You know, he has three little girls, um, and uh, it's hard to, to fight professionally, especially early on, you know, when you're not making much. And, you know, this was a de over a decade ago, and the sport's way different. And uh, so every time I fight, man, um, I just think of him. I fight on. I mean, he's much more of a fighter than I am, man. He really is. I'm more of a competitor and I do this for him too. I do it for both of us. So yeah, pretty emotional. <laughs> Thank you for sharing that. Congratulations. Thank you. You mentioned, you mentioned that, uh, you lost confidence earlier on. How, how did you get that back? What was the point when, when it turned around? Yeah, you know, it's not that I, I really lost confidence. I just, uh, you know, it's when I was sitting in the fighter meeting, you know, and I was young, 23-year-old kid. Um, like I said, I've always been a competitor. I haven't been like a real fighter. You know, I wasn't ever getting in fights. Uh, I had to really learn how to, to fight, you know, and Glory really taught me how to do that. But 
it's not that I didn't have the confidence. It's just that I didn't fully believe. I'm like, this is the UFC. I'm looking around at like Nick Diaz, BJ Penn, Chet Congo. I'm like, I don't belong here with these guys, you know? And, 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 uh, now these days, like I truly believe that, you know, that fighter meeting when Dana White was talking, man, it brought back memories of, you know, what I was thinking back then, you know, when I was 20, this 23 year old kid, but I was just sitting there like, you know, kind of trying to hide in the corner. And now the 32 man, I wanted to jump up front. I wanted to be, tell everybody like, watch me. I'm going to show you how to do this. Like when it, when I, when I was early on the card, second, third, five, I was supposed to be third. When I was second, I was, I was kind of pumped. Cause I was like, man, I'm going to show you guys how to do this. And, uh, but like, you know, I'll say it for the third time, man, short term memory, bulletproof confidence. I've always had extreme confidence in myself, but now I fully believe, uh, you know, I'm the man, man. I, I could be the man in this promotion. Not everybody that gets cut is able to work their way back up. I mean, there must have been, it couldn't have been easy. No, not easy at all. Like I said, I was very thankful. That glory kickboxing, I had no idea what it was. I, after I got cut, uh, I got a call to fight in an eight-man kickboxing tournament. I had never kickboxed before. They're like, winner gets 20K. I was training for an MMA fight. I was like, winner gets 20K? I was like, done. I was like, I'll look at it as sparring, man. I'll go in there, and I don't have to worry about a takedown? Done. I went in there, and I knocked everybody out that night, and uh, it started a career with glory. And I, like I said, I'm very thankful with them, you know, I, and, I, and I learned so much. I got to train in, in Holland and Breda Holland with Nick Hemmers and Core Hemmers and and uh, just le really learn what, you know, the, the art's about. And um, I don't think there's ever been anybody else that gets cut and nine years later gets back with the promotion. So I think my story is pretty cool. I think it's inspiring, inspiring, and there's nothing special about it but hard work and grit and perseverance, man. A lot of these, uh, I don't know if, if heroes is the right word, but legends in the sport that were here at that time. Is there anybody you'd like to fight in the future that – you looked up to? Yeah. Uh, you know, I think, um, like, you think, like, Shogun. I don't know. I think he's about done. I, I would love, you know, that fight, I think. But it just wouldn't feel the same, man. I feel like he's kind of on the decline. Not, not, And I mean this totally respectful, you know. I, I just, it wouldn't be the same fighter that I looked up to, you know. Um, one guy that I really looked up to uh, in glory kickboxing was Gogon Saki. And I was like, damn, this guy is a killer. And uh, just really started, you know, studying him, watching a lot of his fights. And now he's in the UFC. I think it would be cool to go out there and bang with a guy like that. So, um, you know, and, and he's a legend in kickboxing. You know, not so much MMA, but, you know, what a, what, a, what a warrior, man. That would be a cool fight. Right on, man. There's going to be more of this. Thank you, guys. It was fun.